Okay, this is my Genetics 311 exam video 5, and I'm doing prompt 1. So, Francis Crick proposed the adapter hypothesis. He did this because he reasoned there would not be enough affinity between the amino acids and the nucleic acids to account for protein synthesis. So here we have a rough drawing of what is called a clover leaf structure. This is due to having three loops in the structure. At the top of each of the structures, there's an amino acid. On the right side, we have amino acid tyrosine. And on the second structure, we have amino acid serine. On loop three is where the tRNA is, and I have that highlighted out. On loop two is where the anticodon matches with the mRNA sequence. In this example, we have UCA matching to AGU, and then on the right, we have AUG matching to UCA. So the tRNA is the adapter molecule, which transfers amino acids to the peptide chain. This also helps form the secondary structure due to base pairing. In this example, the black box is the ribosome, and the red line is the mRNA. The ribosome travels across the mRNA and reads it. And here we've added a new structure. The tRNA, which is shown in yellow, and amino acids, which are shown as a green dot. The tRNA binds to the corresponding mRNA codon and transfers the correct amino acid to the polypeptide chain. This process will continue to occur until the full mRNA sequence is translated. So what happens when the tRNA is prevented from acting as an adapter? There are different en enzymes for each amino acid. They link up with the tRNA to code for the right amino acid sequence. A specific enzyme that we're going to look at today is amino acyl tRNA. So if amino acyl tRNA links to the wrong amino acid, it can result in a mutation. And most of the time, the mutation could be a silent mutation, meaning nothing's really changed. But most of the time, it'll code for a non-functioning amino acid. And here are my sources, the Hallweg and Jones Genetic 311 Principles of Genetics lecture slides from NCSU.